Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug Tiotropium, also known by the brand name Spiriva. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Tiotropium belongs to the anticholinergic drug classification, also known as cholinergic antagonists. Let's talk a little bit about anticholinergics and how they work. Acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter involved in our parasympathetic nervous system, also known as the rest and digest nervous system. Acetylcholine is where the name anticholinergic comes from. So acetylcholine normally binds to receptor sites in the parasympathetic nervous system, causing rest and digest functions. Normal rest and digest functions include anything that you do when you're resting and digesting. They include increased salivation and digestion, decreased heart rate and blood pressure, bronchial constriction, and more. Tiotropium is an anticholinergic, which means that it blocks or inhibits acetylcholine binding sites, which causes the opposite of the normal rest and digest functions. So tiotropium would cause decreased salivation and digestion, increased heart rate and blood pressure, bronchodilation, and more. You can see that all of these effects are actually just the effects you'd expect to see in the sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system. Again, that's because tiotropium is an anticholinergic, so it does the opposite of rest and digest. Now, tiotropium is administered as an inhaler rather than say a pill or injection, and inhalers don't generally produce systemic effects, which are effects that you'd expect to see throughout multiple systems of the body. So because it is inhaled, it acts locally in the bronchi, primarily producing the effect of bronchodilation. Bronchodilation is the widening of the bronchi, resulting in a more open airway and making it easier for people to breathe. Due to tiotropium's effect of dilating the airway, it can be used in the maintenance of asthma. Tiotropium can also be used in the maintenance of bronchospasms associated with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, which includes asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. Tiotropium has an approximate onset of less than 30 minutes, while salbutamol or ventolin typically has an onset of less than five minutes. This is why salbutamol is considered the go-to rescue inhaler for asthma attacks, while tiotropium is considered a maintenance or controller inhaler. It's also good to know that tiotropium is often given once per day due to its relatively long duration of 24 hours. Some of the side effects of tiotropium include a dry mouth or an unpleasant taste in the mouth, headache, anxiety, and nervousness. Less common side effects include tachycardia, arrhythmias, and paradoxical bronchospasms, which is the rapid onset of bronchospasms shortly after administration of an inhalant. Paradoxical bronchospasms can be life-threatening and may occur with excessive use of tiotropium. Tiotropium may cause worsening of narrow angle glaucoma and urinary retention. Tiotropium is structurally similar to the drug atropine, so patients who have a history of hypersensitivity to atropine should be monitored very closely for similar reactions. Exercise caution in clients with narrow angle glaucoma, prostatic hypertrophy, clients who are breastfeeding, and more. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of tiotropium. You can encourage clients to rinse their mouth after use. During an asthma attack, remember to use a rescue inhaler like salbutamol to open the airway quickly. If your client is going home with tiotropium, always ensure that they understand how to properly administer their inhaler by getting them to perform a return demonstration. There are two pretty common inhalers made for tiotropium, the Spiriva Respimat and the Spiriva Hand Inhaler, each of which must be set up correctly, so be extra careful to follow their instructions provided. For example, the Spiriva Hand Inhaler requires the special Spiriva capsules, which are then pierced using the device. These capsules look similar to capsules that one might take orally, however, they are for inhalation only and are not to be swallowed like ordinary capsules. Remember, the medication will only work if it gets into the lungs via inhalation. Also, a good general rule to teach for inhalers is to inhale for 3 seconds, hold for 10 seconds, and exhale slowly through the nose. And that's about it for the basics of tiotropium. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.